Captains of Industry, brought to you by Airtel. In the coming weeks, the media here expects a showdown between miners and labor. It's the latest round of wage talks. They're very tense and regarded as a precursor to what we call strike season in South Africa. It's a time of tremendous attrition between business and workers. Mining issues in South Africa are particularly sensitive. The sector, as you know, is the backbone of this economy and minerals are seen as the birthright of the people. And this has become especially difficult with some powerful forces in the country calling for the nationalization of mines. Now, it's Begi Sibia's job to manage all of these sensitivities. He's the CEO of the Chamber of Mines, and he's our captain of industry tonight. Begi Sibia, thanks so much for, for your time. Now, as a captain in the mining industry, some would say that you're steering a ship through very treacherous waters. Why did you take this job? I took the job first and foremost because it was offered to me. <laughs> and secondly, it has challenges. And thirdly, when I look at uh, my age, it is at the age where I need to take one last challenge before I retire. Look at the challenges which we are faced with. We are faced with the challenges of safety. There are serious challenges. Probably the mining industry mm. is the most dangerous job except for probably the military and therefore for us we deal with the issues of injuries and fatalities which we need to bring down all the fatalities and mm. the injuries as we move towards zero harm. Mm. There are issues of health mm. where people inhale sometimes dust or they are in a fumy area and therefore they become vulnerable. They have TB and there are issues of lifestyle mm. where people inf get infected by HIV mm. and AIDS and therefore they become have a problem. There are problems of an environment mm. where because of the historical issues we have acid mine drainage mm. and we need to treat that acid mine drainage mm. and become a more portable wet water mm. and therefore usable. And there are issues of environment. Mm -hmm. where for some reasons uh, environmental issues, whether mm -hmm. it's pollution or carbon footprint and those mm -hmm. kinds of things. And then there are issues of nationalization, mm -hmm. where as you in, in introduce the subject, people are saying it's our birthright and therefore right. we should nationalize. How do, you, how do you deal with all these legacy issues? Because as I said earlier, this is the backbone of the South African economy. This country was built mm -hmm. on its minds, really, the blood, sweat and toil of mine workers and there's so many historical, political, social issues mm. that are encapsulated in this industry. The hostel mm. uh, history, for instance, mining yes. ghost towns and the inability of mining companies to invest in local communities, yet you know, extracting minerals that people feel is their birthright. There's so many of those sociological issues in mining. Well, we need to do what we as Africans normally do to say, how do you eat an elephant? It's one chew at a time. <laughs> and therefore, for us, we need to deal with one chew at a time. Let's deal with the legacy issues. The legacy issues really were caused by the companies which operated, closed, and their mine closure was accepted by, by the government at that time, mm. and they moved on and they are mining elsewhere or they have clo closed at all. And that is the responsibility of the state. Normally people say it's mining and therefore it's mining companies. A mining company which opens today and it's black owned, it cannot be caused to have an inheritance of the, uh, the mm. problems which happened a century ago. Mm. And therefore those belong to the government. For us as the mining industry can contribute to the solutions because mm. we have ideas but they belong to the state. And then there are current problems which are saying let's reduce them as much as mm. possible. So for us it's a matter of prioritization. Let's chip away the current problems one block at a time. Uh, currently the news headlines are dominated by the uh, wage negotiations and it yes. seems to be a battleground now because the workers are quite determined mm. to uh, put forward their position of wage increases of around 14 percent in coal and gold mining. Inflation is somewhere in the region of 4.2 percent so the industry is arguing that these wages are um, inflated yes. and that yeah. mine workers are being unreasonable. How do you see the issues? But we look at the demands. We received five zero demands, 50, of which wages are but part. When one looks at the demand for 14 percent, demand for 14 percent is high compared to the level of inflation. 
However, some of them are looking at the commodity prices. And the problem with the commodity prices, they rise and fall. Mm. And sometimes they fall more than they rise. And therefore, they are not sustainable. And therefore, we can't really base where this, the wages are going to be on the commodity prices. Again, to say 5%, I think it would be unreasonable because I think it is low and we need to do some catch-up issues and the quality of life mm -hmm. of the workers have got to be improved. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we have a strange range between 5 I would say, and 14, somewhere there we need to look at settling. What about, you know, you talk about workers arguing the economics of commodity prices and that sort of thing, but there's also the, um, the humanism in the mm. argument where a lot of unions have argued not just in the mining industry that executives in this country earn uh, salaries that are that one would just only imagine what that is including <coughs> bonuses mm. and yet the workers those who actually extract the mineral are always having to ask for that extra one rand ten rands hundred rands mm. just to cope with the living conditions and the cost of living in this country. There just seems to be this huge disconnect between those at the high end of the spectrum and those at the base. I mean, as these negotiations play themselves out, it's many ways uh, a personification of the basic social <coughs> problems of inequality in this country. I do agree that there is an inequality in the country. Probably the inequality in the country is sharper than anywhere else in the world. But it's a reflection of a number of things. The executives on the top end Yes, some of them get a uh, ridiculous remuneration. However, if you were to take that remuneration and divide it amongst the employees, it would not make much difference. But to those executives are people who are already internationally portable skills, and therefore they can work anywhere any else in the world, and therefore, among others, the, the remuneration mm -hmm. is to retain more than to reward them. Mm -hmm. reward the achievement but to retain them and then you look at the w how wide it is it's because of the skill space there are some of the employees who have v so little or no skill we remunerate skill and we remunerate output and therefore at some mm -hmm. stage you need to be saying to lift those who are at the bottom mm -hmm. we need to improve education you and i i would suppose we agree that education in mm -hmm. this country is just What's an interim terrible. solution? Because we've already heard with the new growth path, for instance, from government that uh, there's a proposal to cap salaries, executive salaries across the board to try to manage that, that will not succeed. coefficient. That will not succeed. So what are you offering as a solution? I'm not so sure. For us, we work on <laughs> tripartism. We work with the unions, largely led by the National Union of Mine Workers, and we look at the government and then ourselves. Tripartism uh, uh, at least works. In terms of the skills though, we have for I think about a, a decade and a half working on the adult basic education. And we find that quite a number pick it up and they actually improve their right. skill space. There are some though who because of their age are right. saying I'm too old, I want to move on and I'm going right. to retire, leave me as I am. So for us it, it would be to say let's try to mitigate or manage mm. that the increase at the top level is not too huge, mm. but also improve at the bottom level. The solution may lie, among others, around productivity. However, productivity is a contested territory right. because we say, let there be productivity bonuses, and therefore, how the better you perform as an right. employee, the better you earn, it has a, a bit of a challenge. Another contested territory, particularly in mining, is that of equity and ownership. And you mentioned nationalization. We yes. have this big debate going on in the country mm. at the moment. And it speaks to the core, the very essence of who we are as a people and a democracy. Mm. A a country that has a majority uh, black demographic needs to have that reflected in the economy. And it's seen as though if industry is not prepared to come to the party, then the state should just take it. May we look at the state? The state is a poor manager of enterprises just across the board. There are about 2,000 state-owned enterprises. I can tell you between my fingers and my toes would be the maximum of those which are effective. The rest are not effective. They, they consume resources. You look at what the Minister of Public Enterprises has done. Change, a kind of wholesale change of the boards of mm. uh, ESCOM, mm. of DENEL, and now of Transnet. Yeah. Those are uh, 
important institutions which are changed probably for political expediency. And I can assure you as I sit here now that the executives in those areas are worried more about their job security about that than production. And therefore mining. that is a problem. Let's go back to mining. What's needed to democratize this industry? The government's proposed a new charter with new targets and time frames, about 26% ownership, yes. 2014. Why mm -hmm. is transformation so slow? May we look at, th at, the, at the issue. Transformation is low. However, empowerment in terms of equity in the mining industry has happened probably better than any other industry. If there is any industry which says we have done better, we'd like to see what they are. We were the second one to have a charter, and that charter it has been revised. And therefore, that one is working. Nationalization of resources. We have the mineral products uh, Minerals and Petroleum Resources Development Act, MPRDA, which was uh, in 2004. That one said that the res mineral resources now belong to the state. Mm. And therefore, essentially, we have done nationalization. And now, one hears the ANC Youth League is wanting to take the means of production which are being owned and that being done. Well, why do you think they feel that transformation hasn't happened fast enough? that we're not seeing enough of uh, strategic resources, gold mines, platinum mines, owned by black people? There is a realistic approach and the cynical approach. Mm -hmm. The cynical approach is that it's the rich who want to be rich, because those who are calling for nationalization are not poor. I have not seen any poor one calling for nationalization as loud as the people within uh, the ANC. And the other is, in terms of sense of injustice, really we have centuries of injustice which have been happening in this country and this country is on its 18th year mm. of trying to contra con mm. co correct that is it going to be able to correct it mm. in just 18 or 20 years and therefore it's some say some people are short term in their approach of how we need to solve the problems the problems are deep rooted and they are so historical that we need to take appropriate mm. time Am I saying they are not members who are a bit lazy and therefore are not driving transformation as they should? I would not be saying that. They are those who are a bit slack and therefore it is our role to cajole them, to persuade them, to show them that there are better benefits in transforming than not transforming.